Hi, and welcome to this video, Speed Modeling for Detailing Concept Design. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can take simple meshes and, using this modeling technique, create much more detail onto that base. Uh, for some examples, we can see all of the plating designs and all of the additional uh, sections of this ship were modeled using this technique. You can see a perspective view of it and an aft shot that demonstrates some of these details working on everything from the engines to the uh, the hoses that connect in there to the tail fins and all the housing that goes around that. Another example would be the the armor on this character which was modeled using this technique. A second shot of that. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at a simple design that was provided by a, by a client. So we can see on the left the illustrator outline that we were given and in the, the simple 3D buildup. We're then going to take that model and use this modeling technique in order to get something more detailed, more complex, and a little more fun. So sit back, relax, and we'll get started in just a minute. We're starting with this base mesh, which is a rocket ship based off of an image provided by a client. Now, from this point, we want to be able to add more detail, some hole plating, uh, a cockpit where the little toy drivers could sit, and some more complex engines just to give this a little bit more interesting look to it. And also to be able to practice some of these techniques for quickly modeling detail. So let's start by hiding our background scene. And now we're left with just the, uh, the body of the ship, which we'll rename body, and the uh, fins, which we will rename fins, just to keep ourselves nice and clear. And since we're renaming things, let's go ahead and rename the background scene, scene. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in some engines here. And to be able to add in engines that will go between the fins and the body, we actually want to be able to copy sections, copy polygons from the body and from the fins. We'll paste those into a new layer and go from there. So let's start by grabbing this strip of three polygons here. We're actually going to turn on our symmetry here. So we'll grab three polygons and we'll copy those, make a new mesh item, and we'll paste those in. We'll go back to the fins and we'll grab the three polygons that mirror those three which we had just selected in our in our body. We'll copy those and also paste them into this new layer which we'll rename and call details. You can name these anything you want but for me this will keep it relatively clear in my own head. So from here we want to be able to uh, bridge these together but we're going to notice a problem here. If we just select these and these and hit the bridge tool we'll see that we're not getting at all what we want. And there's a few problems with using the bridge tool in this type of scenario. So we're going to undo, drop the tool, and undo. And for the sake of this, it looks like um, due to the nature of the bridge tool, we're getting some errors with uh, the way it's bridging across our, um, across our space. So what we're going to do is remove them from one side here. Oops and it might help if I drop the bridge tool and let's delete those and the other thing that we want to do is I had been using earlier uh, the select through mode okay let's make sure it's turned off we'll be using select through later and I'll uh, explain the use of the select through mode here in the tool pipe uh, when we get into that here a little bit later when we're adding some piping onto the internal areas um, where we're creating some engines so now with our symmetry mode off we're going to select this one and this one and again, we're going to hit the bridge tool, but we're noticing a few problems with this, as I had said, and we will look at one way that we could work around it, and then we'll look at the way that I think is the better way to do it, and we'll and we'll go from there. Let's start by setting our we set our our divisions to one, so that we now have this uh, middle section here. And what we can do is we'll set our um, action center to selection. If we rotate this around and pull it out a bit, you can see we start to get what we want, but the problem is is that it's been twisting this way. And this isn't based off of the twist of the 
of the bridge tool which we can control this is actually just based off of the the way that these two polygons the, the original two sets of polygons that we bridged are set up so what we really want to do is we want to create something like this here that will go in the middle and we'll actually give the bridge tool a chance to um, have a better idea of where we want it to go I'm going to describe a little bit better the for the bridge tool what we what we need to do so we'll take this section copy and paste it and then we're going to go to an origin axis and um, go to our rotate tool and I'm rotating around the origin now we can pull out this middle piece here you can see that that is getting it in roughly the right area but we're still going to hit some issues here let's rotate a little farther but we're still going to hit some issues with the way this actually bridges across so we also need to go in and change to a selection axis and rotate this piece around like this and this is essentially the big problem that we're having is that since this was rotating around more than 90 degrees the bridge tool sometimes will will hit some errors and so with that we're in much better shape to do this and since we're going to be deleting our end caps I'm actually going to double click I'm going to copy this one before we run the bridge tool so now we have those two selected we're in the bridge tool and let's flip our polys so that we've got this going in the right direction and for now I'm just going to make it be one segment and that will that will work much better okay so I'm going to drop the bridge tool paste in our set of polygons that we had copied and I'm going to select that pasted in set of polys and the polys that are hooked onto the ship there or that were taken from the ship in the extraction and I'm going to run my bridge tool again now I can see the way that this wants to go and pinch off was our issue before but now it's running together much better it's not overlapping any polys or flipping them in an odd direction so now I'll drop our bridge tool double select or uh, double click to select each of these parts then we'll go into the merge tool and we'll merge those polys together so now we have something that's much more like what we were looking for the polys on the fin are um, bridging down to the polys that are on there and now from here we can do what we had done originally as well in that other um, in the other example and we'll we can take this and move it around to where we want to more fine-tune the shape of this and I think I'm gonna pull it sorry, that far, pull it down and then out a little bit and also should we want to we could we could make this sweep forward forward or backward to, depending on the style that we're looking for. Um, I think I want to leave it pretty much flush, so I'm just going to put it right there and drop my tool and we're set. So now that we have this done, we want to, I'm going to assign it the body texture here and also going to go ahead and um, and we're going to Bridge, or excuse me, we're going to uh, we're going to duplicate it, clone it here, and now we have it on, running on either side of of our fin. Okay, um, we're going to bridge these two together, but before we do that, I actually want to get everything just into the right place. So I'm going to turn my symmetry back on, and I'm going to double click on this edge here, um, W for the move tool, and I'm going to pull it down so it's inside the body of the ship so that we don't have any floating polygons or anything. All right. So now I'm going to hit the up arrow key twice so we can move along to the midsection here. And let's actually maximize this view so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. There we go. And once again, I'm going to run the bridge tool. And let's not flip our polygons because we know where we're going. Oops. And for some reason that didn't take. So Let's drop our tool and, oh, because I had symmetry on. So let's turn off symmetry, run the bridge tool again, and not flip our polys this time. Now, I accidentally dropped the tool there before I did it, but if you happen to do that here, we can always go select these you know, for the loop and flip them, and then we're back in business. So should you get the wrong, the wrong direction on your polys, it's never a big deal to go ahead and flip those back to the way that you want them. Okay, so now we want to be able to build a little bit of a housing around where this fin is locked in here. So again, we'll select two adjacent polys and we'll activate our loop slice. 
Uh, we don't want it quite that tight. I think I'm going to go to 10% and I'm going to select just the middle one now. We're going to bevel these out. So let's pull those up. Again, this is just to provide a little bit more of a grounding for where this fin is going through the through this engine mount here. So I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. That'll work. And again, we're going to go to loop slice. This time, I'm going to pull it all the way out to two. Now, what I've done here on the loop slice is I have it set to symmetry and a count of two. Um, this is very useful for when we're tightening up edges on subdivision surface models, um, either using it on two with uh, with two count subdivision and putting them both out to the edge, or if you're just tightening up single edges, then um, only having count of one and having it set to two. Uh, 2%. And then that way you can tighten up edges much more than they would be otherwise. I'm going to do the same thing here on the front and on the back. And I think for now that works for me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select these polys here and I'm going to apply the uh, fin texture to those. And I'm going to go out one more and I'm going to scale these out just a tiny bit, just until the fin itself we see has gone inside this housing. That'll work for me. Okay. And we can see that didn't quite do it on this side, so I'm going to scale it out just a hair more. All right. Okay. Looking good. So we have this part built, and I want to have some kind of a some kind of a heat sink running along here. So there's a couple ways that we could that we could build it. Um, we could build it running vertically along the ship this way, um, set of ridges, but I think that's going to start to get pretty tight. Let's actually have a look at that here. And since that's the purpose of what we're doing is being able to build details quickly. Let's turn our symmetry back on. And let's try building it in here then first. Let's select this loop of edges, hit our bevel, edge bevel, and for round level, this is going to be how many subdivisions you get. I'm going to go with pin. Okay, and that looks like that'll work for me. I'm going to switch over to poly mode and select a group of polys. Select one, alternate, and then just use the up arrow key to select up. And when you select the next row over and do the same thing when you tap L, you can get the entire loop. And there you can grab those, bevel them in. And we could do a, a series of multiple bevels to, um, to tighten up the edges here, but since we already have that loop slice that we've been using, um, with those still selected, we can loop slice the first one. And again, we can use our up arrow key here to select around these ridges. We'll do the same thing here, L, and then we'll again use our loop slice. And you know, actually, that didn't tighten things up too much, so I, I think actually that I really like that, so we'll leave that. And the alternate way that we could have done that again would have been to select the polys along here, loop slice, and then do the same thing um, with the uh, with the inset edges. But I think I kind of like that. It's, uh, it's a little different than I had been thinking of, but I, I like it. And since the point of this is doing concept visualization uh, for the details, and I... I think that um, that works out quite well because we've used um, some quick modeling techniques to be able to get uh, to get something that's not quite what we were thinking of, but still works very well and actually I think in some ways might be better. So uh, don't be afraid to try variations on on that either. And one thing that I do want to do as well here is I want to assign these the alternate texture, the darker texture. So I'm going to select two polys, loop, and oops, select two polys polys, get a loop, and then shift and up arrow to select all the way out. And we don't want to get the actual edge there, but we want to get right up to where, there we go, right up to where the, the little lip starts there. Perfect. So hit the M key again, and we'll drop in the alt texture, the darker one which is the same one that's down here on the engine. Okay, so we have one engine in place, and with that one engine built, uh, we're essentially done building engines, because all we need to do 
is go to our duplicate. We will go to the radial array, set it to three on the y-axis. Um, the y value is uh, doesn't matter here since we're using the y-axis and set x and z to zero. Start and start at zero and at 360 offset of nothing and click apply. Oops. And it helps if we set ourselves to the origin. Click apply and now there we go. We have the engines multiplied around the entire body of the ship. Now we're getting some issues over here and that's because once again I have failed to remember to turn off the symmetry tool. So let's do that. Um, click again and there we go. We're now we're set up, everything is, uh, is correctly placed, and we're ready to move on to, uh, to the rest of the ship.